as far as address multiplexing is concerned we have got uh, 8051 when it is connected to one external uh, program memory that is EEPROM. So, uh, this is the external uh, address bus from port 0. So, we have got uh, this uh, port 0, uh, so port 2 is providing the higher order address bus for A8 to A15 bit, port 0 is the multiplexed address data bus. So, uh, this is uh, pa passed through 174373 latch for multiplexing, for demultiplexing the lower order address bus and the ALE signal is connected to the G pin of 74373 by which we can, uh, when th this ALE signal is activated address is available in the bus and that gets latched here. So, as far as this uh, EEPROM is concerned, so it continually sees the uh, address bus, uh, address bits A0 to A7, A8 to A15 and uh, when this PCN bar line is activated, so it is connected to the OE bar pin of this EEPROM chip. So uh, OE bar is uh, same as read bar as we said, so it is uh, output enable or read bar line. So when these lines are given, so EEPROM will put the content on the data bus and the data bus through port 0 will reach 8051. So in this way, we can connect uh, external program memory to the uh, uh, 8051 chip. So, we also call it external code memory because this external uh, program memory is generally holding the program. Of course, in some cases you can connect, uh, you can put the data th there as well, but uh, for general, uh, generally so that will also be treated as code only. Uh, so, if we look into the timing diagram, so if this is the oscillator clock that we have, so, we have got this ALE signal, so they are activated uh, at this point. So, when the ALE signal is uh, falling, so at that time the uh, PC, the port whatever on, on port 0, so this low, lower order uh, address bits will be put and that will get, uh, that will be sensed here, so that will, that will get latched at this point. And when after that this PCN bar line will go low, so when this PCN bar line goes, uh, makes a transition from low to high, so that is uh, taken as the point at which the data bus will have the opcode available. So, at, the, at, at this point, uh, so in between this uh, activation of PC low and uh, this activation of uh, this PCN bar, so memory is expected to put the uh, opcode onto the data bus, so opcode will be available anytime like this. And uh, when this PCN bar line uh, makes a transition from low to high, then only the opcode will be taken off uh, by the memory. So, it is the protocol, the memory should keep the opcode available for that much amount of time. And then uh, this uh, uh, 8051 will sense this opcode uh, through this PCN bar line and uh, this value is read here. Again after some time the ALE signal will go low and when it is going low, so it will be used as the uh, value to latch the uh, lower order address bus onto the uh, to, to, to uh, lower order address on the port 0, that lower order address bus. So, you see that these signals when they are falling, so they are used for, uh, uh, they are used for sensing the values or similarly this ALE signal is uh, when it is making the transition high to low, so they are actually taken as the triggering point and this PCN bar line, so when it is, since it is uh, PCN bar. Uh, it is the, the, this complementation is there. So, when it makes a transition from low to high, so that point is taken as the triggering point for the memory to uh, put the data. Okay. So, this way uh, this whole operation takes place, the external code memory access uh, reading uh, takes place this in this fashion. On the other hand, if we look into the uh, data memory connection, external data memory connection, then uh, we have got the connection like this. So, here also, so we have got one say, suppose we are going to connect 1 kilobyte of RAM, okay. suppose the RAM we are connecting is only 1 kilobyte long. So, uh, we have 1 kilobyte means, so the, it, the RAM will have 10 address lines. So, this uh, lower order address bus uh, that A0 to A7, they should be connected and this A8 and A9. So, this memory chip has got 10 address lines A0 to A9. So, A0 to A7 will come from port 0 the, uh, through this uh, multiplexing, uh, through this uh, um, uh, demultiplexing of the address bus by 74373 and this uh, A8 and A9, so these two are coming from the port 2's bit number 0 and bit number 1. 
so the rest of the bits are not connected so as we know that uh, it may lead to folding and all that so we will not go into that so other bits being don't care so there that can lead to folding then the read bar line that we have so read bar line is connected to the oe bar or output enable of this ram chip and the write bar line is connected to the write pin of the uh, ram chip so the, the, there is no other decoding done so this uh, cs bar pin is grounded so this uh, RAM is always enabled. So, whenever uh, the address is put onto the address bus and uh, this, this signals read bar or write bar is given, the content of the memory cell will be available on the data bus to be read by port 0. So, um, apart from that this PCN bar line uh, will have no connection. So, if you are not having any external EEPROM then this PCN bar will never be connected and this uh, um, uh, if it is uh, um, uh, if, if the EEPROM is there then that PCN bar line may be connected to the EEPROM and this EA bar line uh, also the, um, uh, the external access so that is that is connected to high because this is not doing an external access uh, as far as the code is concerned this is not code access so this is data access so there is no problem and the timing diagram again uh, so the, this external data memory access is done by the movex instruction we will uh, look into this movex instruction in detail uh, later but essentially its format is something like this so it is like movex at the rate dptr so movex at the rate uh, dptr a or another option is uh, the other way so other the, the it is for getting the data from a register into a memory location pointed to by the dptr register pair and there is another version for storing uh, for, for getting the content of memory location to the accumulator so there you just uh, write it as move x a comma at the rate dptr So, those are the two versions of the MoveX instruction. So, they are for external data memory access. For external data memory access, so it uses the MoveX, um, uh, it uses the MoveX uh, command or MoveX instruction. So, how does it operate? So, you see that first uh, it has to get the instruction from memory. So, for that purpose, so assuming that this opcode, uh, this instruction is in the external memory. So, this is the, uh, the this PCN bar line is activated so that you get the opcode from the external uh, ROM, external EEPROM. So, that is th this part we have already discussed how to access this external ROM. Uh, so, ALE signal is activated, the address is given, lower order address is given, higher order address is put on the PC high and this PCN bar line is given when PCN bar is going high the data the, the, the opcode MoveX opcode is available you know, onto the data bus. Then the decoder uh, will decode uh, that MoveX uh, instruction and now it will uh, go into uh, the second stage, second stage and in that second stage it has to, uh, it, it puts the read bar line. So, DP high the, 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 uh, the DPTR register it is consisting of uh, two pairs DP high, DP H and DP L two 8 bit register whereas DPTR is the 16 bit register. So, this DP high so that will be put on to port 2 because uh, through that uh, this external uh, address bus will be connected to the uh, external RAM. So, it will be put there and this DPL, so this will be this is again multiplexed with uh, data bus. So, that is the port 0. So, the, this uh, so this value uh, this uh, lower order address bus is multiplexed. So, in the lower order address bus put the value DPL. So, higher order address bus has got the content of DPH, lower order address bus has the control of the content of DPL and then this read bar signal is activated when this read bar signal makes a transition from low to high by that time from the RAM external RAM the data should be available onto the data bus. So, on this rising edge the value will be picked up by the 8051 chip and again the so, so that is the complete the, the so move x instruction is complete. So, data is uh, since it is it, it is basically reading the content of memory location into a register. So, read bar signal is given. Similarly, if you want to write like if you want to write the content of a register onto uh, external data on onto external memory. So, in that case write bar signal should be given 
and here instead of uh, coming from external data input it will be uh, from the A register, the accumulator register. So, this uh, how this connection is uh, done like external code memory. So, for external code memory connection, so we have got uh, this, uh, um, uh, this uh, higher order address bus P to provided by port 2. So, P uh, 2.0 to 2.7 they are connected to A8 to A15. Then port 0 provides the multiplexed address data bus. So, this uh, this 8 bits they are connected to the data bus of the uh, of the RAM chip and uh, a, a data bus of the ROM chip and also it goes to the uh, um, uh, latch 74373 latch where uh, it is demultiplexed by uh, by the ALE signal ok. And uh, so, this is so this is the demulti this is the demultiplexed address bus this is the demultiplexed data bus ALE signal is connected to the G pin of 74373 pcn bar line is connected to oe bar and cs bar line is grounded and this uh, ea bar line is uh, grounded so that is it does not have any meaning because it is not the data access so it does not have any meaning so for external data memory access so this is uh, this is the thing that is uh, write bar line is connected to write bar read bar line is connected to read bar PCN bar, uh, so PCN bar is uh, not necessary in this case, it, the connection is not shown here, PCN bar is not meaningful, ALE is, uh, ALE signal is connected to G, so rest of the thing is unaltered. So, P027 goes to this uh, demultiply, uh, this uh, latching, of, uh, latching of this lower order address bus here and the data bus is connected to D0 to D7. So, this EA bar, so this is connected to ground meaning that this is the external uh, memory access. So, this EA bar line is grounded. In the previous case also this EA bar line was grounded because we were doing memory external memory access ok. So, in both the cases external memory, so there will be some more detail the where we will see how this EA bar line makes difference between this external access and internal access. So, since here we are doing external access, so EA bar pin should be grounded and for that uh, code memory access also since we are doing external memory access this EA bar line should be grounded. So, next we will look into how can we uh, overlap this external code and data spaces. So, this is very simple because if you like instead of using a separate uh, EEPROM for storing uh, the program. So, many cases what happens is that we put uh, with the microcontroller a single uh, externally we put a single RAM chip and in that RAM chip. So, it acts both as uh, program memory and data memory. So, uh, for that purpose what we have to do is we take the RAM chip and then this right bar line of the processor is connected to the right bar line of the RAM and this RD bar and PCN bar they are odd and they are that is uh, connected to the OE bar line. So, whichever uh, signal is activated, so RD bar or PCN bar, so both the cases OE bar line will get activated. So, this RAM will be providing the data. So, read bar is activated when it is uh, doing, uh, when it is doing say data access and PCN bar is activated when it is doing program access. Since program and data both of them are residing in the memory in the RAM, so uh, we need to access RAM in both the cases. So, this is a very common practice. Uh, for systems that have got limited amount of external memory. So, we do not uh, put separate ROM and RAM. So, we put a RAM that uh, also serves the purpose of the uh, ROM. So, this is how we, we do that overlapping. So, uh, this uh, read bar and PCN bar, so those two lines are end date and it is given to the read bar line. So, any of them being low, this read bar line will be low. So, we will get that uh, corresponding signal here telling that uh, it is a it is read operation. Similarly, write bar line is connected to the write bar pin of the RAM. So, rest of the thing we have already discussed. So, this is the only additional thing that we have to do this putting of uh, end of read bar and PCN bar for doing the uh, overlapping of code and data spaces. So, what is the advantage? First of all, this overlapping of code and data spaces it allows the RAM to be written as data memory. So, uh, and uh, read as uh, data memory as well as code memory. So, while so, uh, so uh, no code memory is in general uh, ROM. So, we do not uh, write there, we just read uh, the data, uh, we, we just read the code from there 
and the constants that we have in the program. So, they can also be treated as code and those constants are also kept in the uh, ROM. Okay. So, uh, if you are using RAM, then uh, for write or for write operation, so you can uh, use the write bar, uh, write bar pin access and then uh, so we can write the values on to the RAM as data memory. And if you are trying to access the program, then you can uh, use that uh, PCN bar or if you are uh, trying to access the uh, data, uh, data part of the RAM, then you can use the read bar line. So, we can, so what is the advantage of doing all these things? So, this will allow a program to be downloaded from outside into the RAM as data and executed from RAM as code. So, many a times what happens is that with this microcontroller based system, so they have got interface with program uh, with, with personal computers uh, and then there through a download cable, we download the program uh, in, into the uh, into the uh, onto the kit. Okay, so the program is first developed on the PC. So while we do the simulation and all that, so when we are satisfied, we uh, we generate the object code for that program on the PC, and then that object code is downloaded onto the um, uh, 8051 kit. And when we are doing this, so uh, if it is ROM, then we have to go for programming of that ROM, and that is costly because again, if we want to change something, erasing will also become uh, a bit uh, difficult compared to RAM. So instead of that, if we have got RAM to be used as the code memory as well, then we can just write the uh, we can just write the values onto the RAM. So that way, the the entire program can be downloaded into the RAM. Okay. And then we can use that RAM both for uh, program as well as data. So, if you look into the memory structure that we have, so the program memory structure is like this. So, we have got uh, uh, this uh, the total address space, total uh, address line that 8051 has is uh, 16 bit. Okay. So, that is the uh, address bus is 16 bit. So, the address total address range is 0000, 0, 0, 0 to FFFF. Now, uh, so your uh, your access is from uh, it starts with uh, 0000 onwards. Now, now if you uh, make this uh, uh, a bar equal to one, so that means we are accessing from the internal memory, and if you make a bar equal to zero, it will access from the data memory. So, uh, in case of, uh, uh, so if you do it like this, then what happens is that you have got uh, this part. Uh, so, you can put your entire program in the external memory. So, that in that case, we will make EA bar equal to 0. And this, uh, if you have got 4K address space, then this 4K, uh, uh, sorry, so the, when, when EA bar is 0, your entire uh, uh, memory, external memory will be acting as the uh, external prom, external e, e prom that we have. So externally we connect 64k uh, so type of uh, program memory, and then this through this PCN bar line activation, uh, so this entire external chip will be accessed. Whereas if you uh, make this EA bar line equal to one, then for initial access, so it will be using the internal uh, uh, internal memory. But after that, it will be using the external memory. Once it finishes, uh, once it finishes this uh, maximum address, for example, in 8051, we have 4 kilobyte of internal uh, memory, internal ROM. So when this is over, when this is over from the next address onwards, so it will be accessing uh, this uh, external memory. On the other hand, so this uh, for uh, data memory part, so we have got this uh, 00 to FF, so that much will be internal memory and from, from FF onwards, so it will be accessing the external memory. Okay. So, the, uh, so from because only 128 bytes are there for the for the internal memory. So, first uh, this uh, 0 0 to 1, 127, so it will be internal memory and 128 onwards, so it will be accessing external memory and that is detected by the movex instruction. So, whenever you are using movex instruction, so it will be using the external memory and whenever you are using uh, move instruction, so it will be using internal memory. So, we will see that there are two data movement instruction, one is sorry, one is move and the other is move x. Okay. So, move is for internal access. So, this is internal and there is a move x instruction that we have said, seen. So, move x is for external. So, if you are using move x, 
then it will be using this external memory. If you are using move, it will be using this internal memory. So that is the uh, 8051 policy. Okay. So for in, so you can say in some sense, I can say that okay, the total uh, uh, total uh, data memory that 8051 will have in that case is 64k here plus this 128 byte internal. So this 64k external plus this 128 byte internal. So that is the total data memory we can have. For the program memory side, it happens that if EA bar is equal to 0, then the total uh, uh, at uh, total uh, then it will be accessing for uh, whenever it is accessing member program. So, it will be accessing this external memory. Okay. However, if this EA bar line is equal to 1 and the uh, 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 told this maximum address is say 4k, then for the address range 0 to 4k, for 0 to 4k it will be accessing this memory. And when the address goes beyond this 4k, it will be accessing this external memory. Okay. So, if EA bar line equal to 1, then for address between 0 and 4k, it will access internal uh, memory, internal ROM and beyond 4k, it will use the external ROM. Whereas, if EA bar line is equal to 0, in that case for any address, it will go to the external memory for getting the, uh, getting the opcode or getting the instruction. So, that uh, makes it uh, very flexible. Okay. So, we can have, uh, we, can, we can configure uh, this uh, system as per our requirement. And many of the uh, microcontroller development kits, so they uh, do it like this. So, they just uh, map this uh, external, uh, the, the entire memory as the external memory only and uh, we can do that. Or in, in many uh, or in some other cases, what is done is this uh, EA bar line equal to uh, it is made equal to one. So the when it is accessing the internal memory, so that is made to hold the operating system code, monitor programs, and all that. And the user programs are all in the external memory. So it is also done that way. So if we look into this uh, on-chip memory in more uh, detail. So, you can find that, uh, so there are, uh, uh, there, so total uh, we have got uh, uh, 256 uh, bytes. So, out of that, so this uh, 128 bytes that is 0 to 7f, so we will have some uh, um, uh, special feature and remaining 80 to ff, so we will have some other feature. Okay, first of all, 0 to 1f, so we have got some sing general purpose registers, so they are the CPU registers. So, unlike uh, your microprocessor like 8085, so we do not have separate CPU registers because now the memory that the internal memory is also a part of the, uh, of the chip. Okay? So, there is no point keeping something in the CPU separately compared to the memory. So, that is why these registers, so they are nothing but some locations in the internal RAM. Okay? So, 0, 0 to 1 F. So, that is uh, we have got this uh, general purpose registers. Then the location 20 to 2f they are called they are bit addressable. So, in you can you, so you can access individual bits. As we know that the memory has got a word size. So, that word size is in whatever we have discussed they are 8 bit word. So, if you are accessing a location means you are accessing 8 bits at a time. But in many cases we want to access individual bits separately. And for that purpose, we, there is a portion of memory which is bit addressable. So, this 2021 uh, or 20, uh, so we, there are some bit numbers will be given. So, we will see that. So, uh, this location 20 is 8 bit wide, and each of these locations can be accessed separately, they can be set and reset separately. Then 3027F, uh, we have got this, uh, uh, the, this is the scratch pad that we have. So, uh, this is for, uh, this is for some other purpose. So, you can use them as temporary locations, sometimes we use them as stack location, etc. So, it is done like that. And after that, we have got some um, uh, 80 to FF those locations. So, upper 128 RAM. So, for so that is some, some extra RAM locations that we have. Okay. So, this where is this lower part? So, we can use both direct and indirect addressing. So, we can have only indirect addressing here or we can have direct addressing for the special function register. So, we will explain them as we proceed. So, this is the first part, okay? the CPU registers that we talked about. So, the registers, so we, we, there are actually 
32 registers okay and these each uh, e, these 32 registers they are divided into four banks bank 0 bank 1 bank 2 and bank 3 at any point of time only one bank of registers is active okay so this is the lowest bank having the registers r0 to r7 then we have got bank 1 uh, going from R0 to R7. So, like that we have got different registered banks. So, this is that general purpose registered bank 0, 0 to 1F. And at, you can control uh, this bank selection by two bits in the processor status word register which are known as PSW 2 and 3. So, PSW is the processor status word register, its bit numbers 2 and 3 they can be used to select the registered bank. So, this is uh, helpful because uh, what happens if previously while discussing on 8085, we have seen that if we are going from uh, one, uh, pro one uh, program, we executing one program and an interrupt occurs, then it is the responsibility of the interrupt service routine to save all the registers that it is going to use in the body before uh, doing any operation because the, uh, the, if the program which got interrupted may be using those values. And again, while going back, it should restore uh, all those register values before the return instruction. Now, that is costly because so many uh, saves are to be done. So, what uh, is so in this case in 8051, we have got the flexibility that we can just switch between the banks. Okay. Maybe the main program is using bank 0. So, when we are in the interrupt service routine, so we can simply switch over to bank 1 so that all the manipulations that uh, is the interrupt service routine will be doing. So, they will be affecting bank 1 register. So, bank 0 registers they will remain unaltered. So, later on while coming back from the sub program or sub routine. So, you can just switch the banks again. So, that the original bank gets uh, restored. Okay. So, this helps in the context switching process. Okay. So, context switching becomes faster. So, since embedded application, so we uh, want to have faster context switch to respond in real time fashion. So, this is helpful. Uh, 